everyone. Thanks for the warm welcome. Has anyone ever been in a meeting that looks like this? <laughs> this is my reality, especially after getting promoted to a staff engineer where the role was, rather than just doing the work that's handed to you, you have to figure out what should we actually be doing. Um, at times, these two different groups seems like they have different goals. So product really wants to focus on making customers happy. And as an engineer, I just want to do interesting work that doesn't wake me up at night if I'm on call, which was last week, not this week, thankfully. Um, so this talk, I'm going to talk about how to use efficient to actually bring these two groups together with the same goal. So this is what a product team usually looks like, where you may have a product manager who's looking at the direction for the future of your product. You may have a technical lead who's looking at the vision for your actual systems and architecture. And you'll have an engineering manager who's looking at the people and team management side of things. And they may not always be separate people. It could be the same people wearing multiple hats. And I've never met anyone that has worn all three hats. I am not jealous of you. Uh, so the main problem that product teams face is that engineering time is extremely scarce. There's always a constant stream of new work coming in um, with different priorities depending on your stakeholders. And it could be things like building new features that customers have requested. It could be that critical bug that people keep complaining about. Or it could be the technical work that we want to do as engineers. So modernizing platforms uh, or doing big migration projects. You may even have different roadmaps. So a product defined product roadmap and a engineering defined technical roadmap. And this kind of further divides the, the two different groups where there's always this battle of whose work gets into the next sprint or the next upcoming work. And it always leads to frustration on either side. Um, so on one hand, you have feature work, which is providing direct value to customers. So ultimately, you're getting people to actually pay for your product, which is good for the business. And on the other side, you have indirect value. So it could be things like speeding up your deployments so you can make new changes faster um, or looking after the actual health of your system. So we need a balance in the work that we do. So if you focus too much on feature work, you may end up accruing technical debt. So over time, your system becomes more and more unhealthy, and you slow down velocity in the long term. Whereas if you focus on the technical side of things too much, you build an amazing platform that is amazing for conferences, uh, but you don't actually have a platform that people want to use. Uh, so how do we find a balance? One way I've tried this is splitting by time, so setting aside a certain amount of time for a sprint for the work you want to do. So it might be split in half by feature work, and then a certain amount of time is for bug fixes or whatever your team decides. Something I've even tried is setting aside every Friday for bug fixes, known as Bug Bash Friday. But it started off very well, but we did get times where we have too many bugs to work on or none, and we didn't really know what to work on. We didn't really have any alignment either, so we ended up doing work that wasn't actually valuable. So we spent all this time improving CI CD processes for a system that we deploy one, once, one time a year. So something we need to figure out is how do we get alignment with the wider business for the work that we're doing. Another way, which I see quite commonly, is slowing down to speed up, like in a Formula One pit stop. Um, and while this may work uh, temporarily, it can be quite hard to get buy-in for this from stakeholders. You pretty much have to pause value delivery for a set amount of time. And even setting expectations is kind of unrealistic. Um, and th this is actually a symptom of a wider issue where we want to avoid these kinds of situations in the first place. The, the approach I'm currently using is trying to get a shared single backlog. So all the work that we're doing is tied to business outcomes. And it could be business outcomes 
defined by product, but also engineering. And we're tying the work that we're doing to those outcomes using a technical vision. So a vision is like a North Star for your technology, a guiding light for how you want to evolve your systems. Um, when teams are in a stalemate around the decisions they need to make, they can refer back to this, uh, this North Star to figure out what, uh, what they should be doing and make sure their decisions are aligned with the wider organization. So what makes a good vision? So it should be high level, it's broad, it's not defining any implementation details. It should be inspirational, so it's something to actually motivate the team towards a goal. And in some cases, people use it externally to actually hire people for your teams. It should be future oriented, so not actually looking at how things are done currently, but how we should be doing things. And it should be long term, so it could be set over long, uh, a long number of years. And for that reason, you should revisit it regularly to make sure it's still valid. So how does it all fit together? So we're able to define what we want to do, why we want to do it, how we're doing it, and then who and when it actually gets done. Um, so if we use an example, the business goal that you might define with your product manager is we want to reduce time to value. So we define a vision that is looking at the actual problems that we want to solve. So enabling teams to automatically deploy changes to production or reducing the overall burden of the infrastructure we're looking after. And when teams actually get to deciding what they're doing in their roadmap, they'll look at how things currently work today, so their current state. They'll look at the target state of where they want to get to, and then they'll figure out what's the next best step, steps to work on. Will they focus on experimentation so that they're actually validating the decisions that they're making? Um, so an eventual roadmap might look something like this, where every step you're delivering some sort of value, either by delivering to customers directly or learning more about the problem that you're trying to solve. And where vision and strategy fits in here is it's the overall guardrails or guidelines that allow teams to have autonomy for these decisions as long as they're sticking between the lines. Even with all these approaches, a common theme that keeps coming up in this conference is we need trust. Um, Hans mentioned this a bit, but uh, even if you follow all these approaches, you still need a partnership with your product people. So uh, engineers need to trust that product understand that value comes from a good, strong technical foundation. And uh, product need to trust that engineers actually care about the product um, and are trusting engineers' judgment for working on the highest value work as possible. Um, so hopefully by following some of these strategies, you can achieve a healthy balance. And remember, we're all part of one team and we should have the same vision. Thanks for your time. <laughs>